Okay, you long enough, they kind of tell you their names. Hello, welcome back to Rapid Travel. Today we are at Croc City. So uh, let's go and have a look. Hello, how are you? You go first to all left, strike up with the tunnel, Dragon's already started with the snake show. Okay. The snake show. You can go through. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that tiny one. Yeah, it's not. You'll notice there's a raised ridge cutting through the, the, the scale like the keel of a boat. That is what we call a keel scaled snake. Out in nature, 99% of keel scaled snakes are not only highly venomous, they'll bite you because you're close enough to reach. This is a beautiful snake. It's just that it's hippie, it weighs about two kilos. Likely to get bitten by. Firstly, we have the Mozambique spitting cobra. Uh, she, they were in the Kruger Park. She was uh, five years old, she was lying, six years old, she was lying in a bed, and the Mozambique spinning cobra fell out of the thatch and bit her twice on the inside of her arm. The parents stayed calm, they'd been to a venomous snake handling, uh, a, 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 a venomous uh, a snake show, show, and they called the lodge manager, they got her in the car, they rushed her to the hospital, the doctors were waiting, she got the right treatment, and a month later she was back home. And it looked like she had a burn scar on her arm. By the time she's 18, that'll be barely visible. So um, as bad as the, the bite can be, well, uh, most of the expanding cobra bites are very, very, very survivable. Now this Cobra. is the one snake everybody in South Africa knows. This would be a puff adder. Now the puff adder, along with the Mozambique spinning cobra, is the other snake that is most likely to bite you, but for different reasons. Oh, that's easy enough. Ah, there you go. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring them around. I want you to feel the belly and you feel those keel scales. If you've ever wondered what a rattlesnake feels like, well, it's pretty much the same. For a newborn snake, everything is a threat. And the way to respond to a threat is kill it, as, kill it before it kills you. So, um, and remarkably, around 50 to 60% of all puff adder bites are dry. So if you get bitten by a puff adder, there's a really good chance you've got a dry bite. Hey buddy, are you sleeping? You're sleeping. Oh, there you're waking up. Hey 
Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Come here. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Are you looking for food? Uh -huh. Are you looking for food? Oh my gosh, look at that. But look at these things. And some people get them. There's yeah. two of them. Look. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are minute. They are so small. Got a few of them, yeah. Okay, off we go to the next show. If the average human were to grow at the same rate, you and I would weigh around 11 tons. Now you're welcome to hold them. Um, you can uh, just, when you, when you do, there's a couple of rules, okay, so pay careful attention. When you hold them, flatten the hand, thumb on the back. Now put your fingers past the front legs. If he bites you, you might need stitches. Hold him like that and support the tail. If you're holding it this way, it relaxes because it knows you're not going to drop it. And as long as you don't touch the mouth, it's not going to bite. You want to take some pictures? You're welcome to take your mask down. Get your cameras ready. Take as many as you like. Come well, long enough, they kind of tell you their names. He hasn't told me yet. <laughs> You understand why a snake bites people, and you understand why they wouldn't bite a human. By preying on one another, each balances the other's population. Too many piranhas. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Too many piranha would eventually damage the river system by destroying the plants that naturally clean the river. Too many caiman would end up disrupting the fish population. By preying on one another, each one balances the other's population. Now the reason these guys are chasing me is because they haven't eaten in a couple of weeks because they weren't that hungry. Now with this weather and the pressure we're having, their metabolism is speeding up, so now they are. They're not right chasing to attack me, they're just chasing me because they know I'll feed them. And um, in South America, you can swim in the river systems where these are. They don't attack humans. Um, at, at, at their size, this is they're going to get a little bit bigger and that'll be it. At that size, attacking a human would be pointless given the fact that there's so many other species of fish to prey on. If you're in South America, you can swim in the rivers where they are. They'll tend to avoid a human. Now, these are 10-year-old brown caiman. 
Next, I'll show you the same aged alligators and Nile crocs, and you'll see the difference. Let me climb over here, and I'll toss them in a chicken or two. Oh. There. There. There's one. There's one. Wow. You see how they eat their prey? They bite and then the whole time while they're chewing, they feel where the bigger bones are so that they can crush them and so that it's small enough for it to swallow. Oh, don't eat me! Don't like it! You call, we have a problem. Alligators live in fresh water. Now crocodiles live in both fresh and salt If alligators grow an average of three, a big alligator would be four meters long. Now crocodiles average is about three and a half to four and a half, but they get six they know they're going to have food. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look, they start moving now. Look here. <laughs> yeah. Oh my word. Yeah. Coming from everywhere. Wow. Look here. You're Ikaki, yo! My words! Crocodile infested waters. Oh oh! Yes! Yo! Mama, mama, yeah! Yo! What's happening? You can hear that snapping sound. I know. <laughs> Jaws closing. Mm -hmm. That. That too. There. They're not hungry. I don't think not. You think it's a leo? <laughs> Just hold the camera quickly, I want to climb over. Yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> okay guys, that's one side of the fence. And that's the other side of the fence. A huge crocodile. He's running towards the rabbit. Yeah, I want to. Grab him! Grab him! I want to. Oh, ah, he's got it. Give me food. You steal my food. Hi guys, this is Oscar. He's been making pizzas now for the past 13 years. Yes. So, so and the you secret is, I make my own dough, I create my own meat. Own dough, own yeah. toppings. Yes. Okay, and this is the best pizza. So guys, please come and support him, yeah? How much is it for the large pizza? Pizza is about 110, 105, something like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but it's worth it. Exactly. It's worth it. Yeah. We've got a nice setup here. You've got a nice setup, yeah. <laughs> and it's all uh, a wood oven. What I call it's it? Wood oven. Yeah. Specialized with thick bases. I only do thick bases in a special occasion, right? And I have to cook my best before you yeah? make a pizza for you in a thick base. Right? Okay, yeah? okay. That's so nice. Sometimes if you don't put the, the thick bases inside, you find it like it's dog. Okay, so you know what you're doing. Yeah. No. I would highly recommend this place and it's very clean. Your place is very, 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 very clean. Thank you, Thanks, Oscar. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>
Close. Hey, buddy. Play area for the kids. Okay guys, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us. Remember to subscribe and hit that like button. We would really appreciate that. Until next time, stay safe. See you guys in the next video.